Hello friends and neighbors, my name's Andy, and welcome to this, the first installment to a series of an as-of-yet undetermined length, where we will be working together to implement our own version of the classic Conway's Game of Life. This first episode will be dedicated to the first two steps in any problem uh, that I am faced with, where I will describe the problem and describe my proposed solution. So first of all, Conway's Game of Life. What am I talking about? Uh, so I think the, the quintessential reference for, for talking about this, uh, this, this game is a 1970s Scientific American column. Uh, it was in Martin Gardner's um, Mathematical Games column. It's considered to be a zero-player game in that you, the, the player, uh, have the responsibility of setting up an initial game state, giving it a set of initial conditions, and then once you've done that, it simply follows a set of rules, and the game state evolves from there with no new input or changes from you, the player. Um, so it kind of makes a, a reductively simple model for uh, population distributions. Um, and so um, the, the name, Conway's Game of Life, um, indicates that it was developed by a British mathematician named John Horton Conway. Uh, but like I said, that Martin Gardner article that I will link somewhere down below or an annotation, I recommend you check that out. It's very interesting um, and comes from a time before, you know, computers were necessarily in everyone's home. So their approach was um, describing how to play you know, with uh, something like a chessboard and tiles, but uh, we're, we're going to we're going to use a computer, um, and so to describe um, what goes on when you're playing the game is you have uh, what is nominally an infinite grid, and some way of indicating whether a tile is occupied or unoccupied, and then once you've given some arrangement of occupied tiles to start out with, the game will follow a set of rules that determine whether or not a tile remains occupied, um, becomes unoccupied, or an unoccupied tile becomes occupied. So any occupied tile uh, with fewer than two occupied neighbors will become unpopulated. Uh, an occupied cell with exactly two or three occupied neighbors will remain populated. Any unoccupied cell uh, with exactly three occupied neighbors will become populated, and any uh, uh, occupied cell with more than three occupied neighbors will become unpopulated. And so it's a simple set of four rules, very easy to enforce, um, but will give rise to very interesting patterns. And so that sort of becomes the challenge of the player, is determining um, and, and, and some set of initial conditions that will give rise to interesting outcomes. Uh, you'll see things that will simply die out, things that will become static, uh, but more interesting things that will give periodic behavior or possibly even generate um, new structures as they move across the grid. Um, and so we'll look at some of these once we actually have a working version, but if you want to check it out now, I'll also see if I can find uh, some existing um, implementation of the game for you to check out in the meantime. As for the tools that I'll be using um, to work on my own implementation, I will be using the programming, programming language Python and a few libraries. One will be Pygame uh, for doing the user interface, uh, which is a library designed for people who want to make video games in Python, which so this seemed like a, an appropriate time to to familiarize myself with this. This will be the first time I've used it, and uh, indeed one of the first times I will have uh, worked directly on anything with some kind of proper graphical user interface. In my uh, professional life, I mostly uh, live in, uh, in in terminal interfaces, so so that's one of the reasons why I'm calling this a, a let's try and not a how to, because uh, I'm 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 certainly not an authority on all of this, um, and because my experience with with Python and programming in general uh, isn't necessarily as a, a software engineer or a software programmer fundamentally but in using these as a set of tools for doing science. So I'm very familiar with a set of tools called Scientific Python or SciPy. 
So uh, the three things that I think are sort of critical, if you would like to try and follow along at home or wherever you may be, uh, is, is Python, Pygame, and SciPy. Um, I will provide links to all of these things to where you can find them, uh, and I can provide a little bit of assistance in getting them set up if you're in a Linux environment. Unfortunately, I've just sort of come to terms with the fact that I am not good in Windows um, as a development environment, so I apologize to anyone if that sort of excludes you from, from participating because I, I do not have the, the skills or knowledge to, to, to give you what you need um, to get everything set up there. Um, my Linux environment will be not identical, but similar to anyone experiencing um, this on a, on a Macintosh in uh, OS X, um, since they share a lot of similar uh, tools to what you'll find in the Linux uh, user space. So uh, those are the tools that I'm going to be uh, using, and I'm going to present it, um, breaking it down into smaller subsections. The first thing I think I'm going to do is the user interface. Um, because while I am much more attuned personally to what's going on under the hood, that sort of back end, um, I don't think it's going to be uh, fun or informative to look at that without some way of actually looking at what's going on. So I feel like we need that user interface first. So that's going to be the first thing I, I put together and present to you. Um, followed by that back end, the, where we apply those set of rules uh, after we've initially set up our conditions. Uh, and then once we've sort of done both of those things, uh, I think it's kind of open where we go from there, and that's where I would really like some feedback. Uh, here are some things like, what would you like to see? Would you like me to build some of the more interesting um, creations that you can make in Conway's Game of Life and show those off, uh, possibly even uh, share save files for anyone who makes um, the, the same implementation that we have to, 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 to open up and look at and play with personally. Um, I think that would be very interesting, and um, I'll let a few episodes um, happen before I make the final decision on whether or not that's where I'm going to, to head with this in terms of the, 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 the concluding direction. Uh, having said that, um, I, I hope you're excited. I, I hope that you can follow along uh, and get something out of this and learn and be entertained. Um, and there will be no YouTube comments because that's not something I can deal with too readily. But um, I will share uh, some of my, my social media down below. So if you want to, to, to participate and talk to me, please do. Um, just, you know, be respectful, all of that. Uh, and with that, uh, I, I wish you the best until the next time our paths cross. Thank you.